Tide Water Terrell, frozen cups and hot chips underneath Dick Price Stadium. Here as we do some pre-homecoming, you know, always around town, uh, covering Camelot, the Green Box segment. Uh, we just wanted to come out and let you know we appreciate again the support, the uh, Deep Creek celebration. Uh, when you look at, you know, the basketball and football dynamics, the ball players, the NFL exposure, uh, you know, just really, really just a great piece of content celebrating some, some you know, gladiators of a different time, Southeastern District, Deep Creek, Camelot. We're going to be talking about Camelot in general and a lot of the different other neighborhoods that we touch on. Uh, Chris Davis and the crew, Daryl Paul, thank you, Calvin Lewis, uh, Farley Perkins, Byron Wilson, um, so many that have come out and contributed with us uh, and made it a joy to be a part of just celebrating a nostalgic neighborhood in the Tidewater region. So what we want to do is get back to it. Uh, we had a chance in Camelot in particular to talk with uh, Chris Davis, who was reliving some of his Camelot days. You all know I used to, uh, as a youth, get out there in that same press box and call the games with some really dynamic players. Uh, Chris Davis was reliving it, talking about some of the, the players, some of the plays they had, just touching base. And then, of course, George Concepcion, a Joyzy native, uh, Plainfield representative, uh, talked about just being from another location, an implant, coming to Camelot, how he was reared. Uh, and then, more importantly, Chris and George, who are also coaches and rearers uh, and supporters of the youth and how things are coming about now, touched on the fact that the parents, you know, in particular, how you are in the stands, you know, how you impact the coaches. Your baby might be nice, but in order to get to the next level, they got to listen to coach and the staff. I'm tired with a Terrell. We ain't going to talk too much. We're going to touch on that. Uh, Demika Haskett, King Robinson, Melissa Davis, all of that crew. We got you coming. Uh, a lot more going on. Just stay tuned. I'm tired with a Terrell. I'm on campus. I'm early. It's homecoming. It's frozen cups and hot chips. Let's go. Easy stag flank. I drop back. Two bombs. The easy stag. Here, one of them got called back on the holding. The other one was six. Easy stag or verify that story. I'm going to give you one better. He had the picture of our team. We all had, we all took, I don't know if you remember Marcellus Edwards. Yeah. We all used his, we all used his helmet because we all had, he was the only one on our team with a painted helmet. He was the only one in 86 with a painted helmet, painted with the red skins on Taking it. pictures over there? Taking pictures over there. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. We took pictures, and he came out here through two TDs, the easy stag. Going this way. I got mine, Sarani Banner. We used the Cowboys. <laughs> my second, uh -huh. my, my, my first scoring touchdown against the Oilers. Hold up. Earl Campbell Jr. With Earl Campbell Jr. Damn, with King Earl Robinson. With Earl Campbell Jr. King Robinson had the big <laughs> with the, with the horse collar. Shirt way up here. Yo, listen. Oh, okay. So, gentlemen, just so I could break in, yeah, we just allowed you all a little intimate moment. Terrell Ducree, frozen cups and hot chips. So grateful to have two, two Camelot legends. We're here celebrating the Camelot celebration on the Green Box segment. And, of course, I have Chris Davis in town freshly from the Midwest. And, of course, we got Ghetto Gov. You know that familiar face. And we're just out here. We got a, a segment that we're going to do touching with some of the athletes and just celebrating the lineage of Camelot. So, gents, right there in that story, bring, we, we just wanted to let you all kind of get into it. Tell us what you were bringing the, the audience into on that moment there. Man, I, I'm, giving, I'm giving them my, my experience as a Camelot athlete, as a legend, as you want to call it. I call that life. But anyway, I'm telling the Gov and the listeners, salute you all. My first experience in Camelot as a football player for the Redskins I was with 86. the Cowboys. Coach Gatlin got rest his <laughs> Bobby Gatlin got rest his Yeah, no doubt. Dropping back, throwing at the easy stag twice. The easy stag, you better verify the story, kid, because you know that was you. 
We was neighbors in Camelot and Round Table Court. Don't you better recognize my chest and with Sirani Bandit. <laughs> so look, guys, just kind of wrapping it up. We having fun, but to, yes, to the youngsters that aren't around, we're celebrating Camelot. To those that weren't around when we were there, weren't around in particular. Chris, you were one of the first ball players that we remember coming from this area here on these hallowed grounds, on this field, this uh, everywhere that we could point to. My father, my, as a matter of fact, shout out to you. He appreciated the uh, mm. most recent birthday shout out mm. also. But we used to sit back and watch you and wait for the camera to pan and see you out there and know that that guy was from here. And, of course, those 4 o'clock days at the football, well, at the basketball court, which is now a rec center, but this field that we're standing on. And, of course, you know, we've played football here. we got some players that are coming out, Keaton Hyman. Uh, I think Farley Perkins might be making an appearance. But we are celebrating the lineage. We're not staying stuck in the past. But before social media, there were a lot of warriors out here that did a lot of things that you never know about. And, of course, Ty Water Terrell going to make sure that you never forget. Chris, we're glad you're back. We're going to talk about Deep Creek. We're going to talk about your, uh, you know, uh, ascent and how you were able to leave here, play ball in that vaunted Big East Conference with some ball players. People don't know what the early 90s in the Big East. I mean, we've heard Lonzo Morning and some of the other names, but from this area, it's Alonzo and then it's maybe, you know, Mike Evans, it's Chris Davis. It's, it's a ton of names, but when you look on that camera, Chris Davis was on the camera at Seton Hall. I barely got a chance to see Chris other than when he was on the court. But you couldn't tell me nothing when I saw my guy on TV. Chris, talk to me about playing ball for Deep Creek. You know, that, that team that you played ball on. Tell me about that energy. But then I want you to talk Seton Hall and coming and, and putting your, your mark out in this world. Man, first and foremost, shout out to all former, uh, for, for, to all former Deep Creek ballers. I'm going to tell you that right now. So with the lineage, I'm talking about from A.J. Jemison to Dwight Purnell to Bobby Bryant to Calvin Copeland to Curly Young to Chris Davis to okay. Daryl Paul yes. to, to, to my little cousin Vincent Davis mm. to Greg Taylor, my yes. king. Rest I in mean, peace, smooth, you, no I question, do. no doubt. I mean, Keaton Hyman, you want to talk about history? Come on, man. Forty. What we 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 have the district in the in the still in the state of Virginia, the longest winning streak in district history. Mm. We won sixty four straight. Wow. We couldn't be touched. When when you talked Deep Creek basketball in the eight the late eighties early nineties, all you talk about was wins. Mm. We had that. You know, when you talk about that energy, take us back late eighties early nineties. What was the basketball scene like in the southeastern district? Man, I mean, you talking about. Friday, Tuesdays and Fridays, I don't care where you went. If D Creek was playing, Woo! it was packed. We went to go play church and it was sold out. That might have been the first time in church in school history. Wow. Was that when Dunbar was playing? Dunbar. No. no. Dunbar was behind you, huh? Ricky Dunbar? No. Or, uh... Uh, Mike, was it Dunbar with Churchland? Uh, yeah, that was Mike Collins. Mike Con yeah, yeah, yeah. That might have been behind you. That was okay, behind me. okay. I'm gonna let you know. I was trying to figure out who from Churchland might have been playing ball for y'all to get. Oh, y'all no, ran I, through. Oh, my, no, oh. No, listen, that was what I was getting. You at, talking really, Chris. about the South District? Come on, man. Okay. I got. Ah. If you go to Deep Creek High School, you look from '87 to '92. I'm gonna say '92. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. You mm. see district. You see district banners. Mm. The, the goal every year was to hang a banner. You don't want to just be known. When you walk into a place, you want to be known as a legend. Listen, I, I, I would never in a million years forget this place, this city, this ground. Mm. This, is, this is my city. So when you think about just the pitfalls, okay, in the 90s, we know what it was in the 90s. This was the, uh, you know, the, the pre- uh, you know, the crack era, yes, cocaine, sir. powder yes, versus sir. base. We talked about it before. So you had a lot of, when you were a ball player in the 90s, that off the field is different than that ball court. Talk to about the pressures off the court. You know, man, it's crazy. I think about, I, I mean, you know, we talk about my man, the ghetto gov. Let's talk about it real quick. He was this, he was the guy that was, mm. you know, hey, man, why? Y'all don't need to do this. Still. Y'all athletes. Yes. Stay out these streets. And of course, the gov and I, we 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 similar in age. We want to talk about how or how young he is. We want to talk about how beautiful that young man is. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you right now, it was guys like us who was trying to keep everybody from doing. We we saw the potential in what we had from the time we was in 
6th, 7th, 8th grade, we knew what we had at Deep Creek. We knew it was special. And every, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm, I'm about to really get deep. Cornell Parker. Everybody know, everybody know Cornell Tutu from North. He mm. wanted to come to the Creek. Because mm -hmm. we had what everybody wanted. And that mm. was winning. Yeah. Yeah. We had, we had Slop. I don't know if y'all know Sherrod Joe. I'm going to shout out to my man Sherrod Joe. John Nixon. Wanted to come to Deep Creek. John Nixon was out the last day. Wow. We taught. I, listen, if he was here, he'd tell you. And so we got Ghetto Gov in the corner yeah. as one of our statisticians. If you're wondering where, you know, what we're, what we're looking at, you know, Chris is, is also, look, one thing about Ghetto Gov and, and King Robinson, we mentioned earlier in the segment, some historians about Camelot athletic lineage. And uh, so, you know, hey, we got a couple of items. We're going to bring Ghetto Gov in. He's got, both of these guys have lineage and family members that are also keeping the, the torch alive. And we're going to touch on that. Chris, we've been Back. We're gonna switch locations. We just Salute. we just getting started, Salute. man. You know, give Salute. us a second. We'll be right back. I'm Terrell. This is so, gentlemen. Both of you all uh, not only have have played, witnessed, and had offspring that have played at some of the highest levels. Talk to me about this current environment that we're in and how we can maintain keeping these youth that not only can graduate but to get to the next level in life. Mm. Either one of you first. I'm glad you said that. You know. I'm the um, regional recruiter for Bluefield University. And that well at the time was Bluefield College. To the parents, you can't wait till your kid become a senior in high school thinking they become a student athlete. It all start from the elementary on the way up. I was just fortunate enough that I installed that in my son. And you know, he, he listened and went to school for free. Not once, but twice. Mm. You got two full offers. Mm, Y'all heard that. Pocket, dad time. That's daddy talking, okay? Dad time. So, you know, it's the academics thing. You can you can holler, oh, my baby D1, D1. If your baby D dummy, he ain't going nowhere but home university. Oof. It's you. Yeah. It might hurt, but it's real. And he's telling you exactly what you need to be instilling in the youngsters, okay? Yeah, I, I can definitely attest to what, what uh, George is saying. You have to. Listen, that was the one thing that. I, I, even even as a player myself, I, I'll, I'll use myself as the example. I couldn't come home with bad grades. My mom didn't play that. And for those of you who know who my mother is, you know she didn't play that. I, I, <laughs> my mother is six foot two. She don't play no games. She'll knock your head off. But in all that, with, what I'm saying is, with that being said, you, the parents, like Joy said, if you you got to teach these kids now. It's about the academics first. Football ain't going to never go away. Basketball never go away. Baseball is never going to go away. You know what I'm saying? They just, it's just, I mean, it's too much money being made. However, you got to get your books. You got to get your books. And for all of you who think that, oh, well, you know, I can do this and I'm going to be the athlete. Hey, man, they're not even taking that no more. They're not taking it no more. So listen, if, if to the parents, and I, I mentioned this question because I always say it in a lot of different segments because the parents, you always see them in the stands, a lot of times living vicariously through their babies, and you all know it. You, you That's why. You see that? Y'all see that reaction? That's because real acts that real. You hear me? Tide water to real acts that real. When you want to talk to the parents, what y'all got to say to them? Sit your dumb ass down. <laughs> and that's I real. Gonna, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this frozen cups and hot chips, okay? Uh, sit your dumb ass down. <laughs> Let your kid be a kid. Install values will, into them. I will tell you like this. Please, don't coach your kid from the sideline. Mm. No. I coach girls basketball in Iowa right now. I have 15 U, or next year, next summer there will be 16 U girls. Well, look, I have one young lady. Go for it. I like this. How many young ladies you help put in college? Mm. I've sent 62 young ladies. Oh, y'all heard them numbers. Y'all heard them stats? 62. Okay. That come right before 63? That come right, right after 61. Right after 61. Oh, okay. Mm. Just so you guys know that. So okay. I can tell you this from a coach's standpoint. Be the best cheering parent you can be. Because when a coach recruits your kid, they not just recruiting the kid. Who they recruiting? They so? recruiting the parent. Mm. They recruiting the girlfriend. Mm. They recruiting whoever whoever has an impact. Y'all better on listen. That program. Okay. I'm telling you right now. I I talked I talked to a coach at the University of Indiana the other day, and I'm not. This is not a drill. This is true. I was like, Coach, what's going on? We talking. He goes, Hey man, 
you know, I was asking him about recruits. And he says, oh, yeah. I said, well, Coach, I thought y'all was on top of this one girl. He said, yeah, man, we was on top until we saw her in a photo throwing up gang sign. We dropped her like she was a hot boy. Wow. We're Social media about, matters. Man, you're yeah. talking about, if you don't, you got to be able to handle that as a parent, as a player. Mm. I know what his son did. Why? Because we had these discussions. Mm. Hey, man, you can't be on social media throwing up your middle finger, blah, blah. You cannot do those things. Especially with the, you know, can't be no blood, no crip, none mm. of that. Just none be yourself. Mm. Be who you are. Like I tell you. You said earlier, it, Chris. Please be who you are. Stop, be, stop being a play gangster. Stop. You can't pay for the jewels that these gentlemen drop. Ghetto Gov, Chris Davis. Chris, you like you want to say something else? Say I, it. I'm going to just say, I'm going to end it like this. I love all the youth that go out and do this. But for those who go on and, and have a higher purpose, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons as well. Don't do it because your parents are living vicariously through you. Do it for you. Oof. What was that word you used? Oof. Vicarious, my friend. Vicariously. Vicar oh, yeah, they dig I, into the dictionary on frozen cups son, and hot chips. Yes, sir. A, yes. He lives it runner. through him. Say it again, Chris. My <laughs> son is a runner. Mm. Not my a ball play? No, my son don't play no basketball. My son's six and four. He is a mile runner. Oh, he is endurance. All American. That's Chris Davis, Ghetto Gov. I'm Tidewater Terrell. This is another immaculate segment right here as these guys cut up on frozen cups and hot chips. <laughs> a truly amazing segment. Uh, just, you know, celebrating Camelot, the lineage of where we come from. Uh, some of the legendary ball players that have come through those uh, hallowed grounds. Uh, thank you to uh, some of the crew that have played ball, uh, celebrating Camelot in general, uh, just continuing to show us exactly uh, what our lineage is about. Man, you see that beautiful shot behind me? Yeah, that's Dick Price Stadium. Boy, it's a few days before, you know, homecoming 2022. Only time where the Terrell gets access like that. You know, we're going to be touching on, uh, of course, you know, some of the Norfolk State lineage, Maynard Scales, station manager, Hot 91.1 FM. He's coming on Frozen Cups and Hot Chips. He's going to sit down and discuss his his journey, the vision for Hot 91. And all I'll say is what they got coming here at the first of the year, just know you heard it here first. Uh, of course, more celebrations with Camelot ball players. Uh, you know, mental health. We're going to touch on a lot going on here in the fall, different things going on that affect our community. Sports, HBCU, KRSB Network, what's up? We need to get together. KRSB Network and Frozen Cups and Hot Chips working in tandem on a number of different projects. In the future, we'll get to linking up on some more of the HBCU sports. In the meantime, here we are at a HBCU Mecca, Dick Price Stadium. You know in 1997, the first game ever broadcast here against Virginia State. I was on the air in the stadium here. We helped build this place. We're going to continue as I stumble over my words, but I ain't stumbling over the content. I'm tired with a Terrell. We're touching the community. Better get with us.